time for the bell. How many options will you sell? Fire up your platform, get ready to enter. But first, let's get the mindset centered. Hey, hey, let's go. Uh, we're not here to gamble, we're here to trade. We follow the plan, that's how we get paid. Testing, trading, have success. Find what works for you and forget the rest. Stats and probabilities is what we're about. Time to dismiss greed and doubt. Focus on the process, not the money. And the profits will flow like honey. Power our live, let's start the show. Come on, trade hackers, get ready to go. Zero day options, time to make bank. Get locked and loaded, then be ready to plank. Hey. Hey everyone, welcome to Power Hour Live, Thursday, October 10th. S&P down 24, NASDAQ down 57, Russell down 23, Dow down 200. Gold is up three quarters of a percent, silver up 2%, notes and bonds red, 10 year yield up about a half percent, oil up three and a half, natural gas up about a half, soybeans and corn red, wheat a little bit red, euro and the pound a little bit red, Bitcoin down 3%, VIX up one and a half percent, sitting at 21.19. Uh, I just posted a little bit ago. I put on this little Wuga ish trade in NDX. Wuga doesn't qualify today, but just wanted to put something on with uh, no stop, just to uh, see if we could capture a little capture a little pin there. Good risk reward ratio. Max loss seven fifty six. Max profit over twelve hundred. Uh, did a one DTE. Earlier today, just did smaller size. Day after CPI doesn't um, test very well, but with the intent of transforming it pretty quickly, which I was able to do. In fact, it's dead centered if I would have hold it, held it. But for tomorrow's expiration, got an upside risk-free upside vertical. I've uh, been doing some BIC, my normal BICs today. That last little flush Smoked me out of some put sides, but still barely green. No double stops. And I've still got my 915 tranche is a uh, potential for a full, full win. So it could be green here. If things don't go too crazy here in the last hour. Uh, my price action Bix uh, are green as well by a little bit, by about for 400 and some i may still put one more on here if we get a little bit of consolidation going on but that is it for me let's see chad let me make you the co-host there you go chad how's your day it's been a pretty light day really um didn't do a 1 dte because of cpi and um, put on an AM number one, and it got off, I booked twenty and forty percent, and then it got off centered, and so I put on a AM number two, and I got smoked out of it on this that, that nasty down move um, that ended up helping my AM number one. So I've just done two trades, and that's it right now. I just being a little careful. Um. You know, had the price action has had a pretty narrow range today, but it's just yeah. these little quick right. spiky moves. Yep, that's that's what I mentioned earlier. After when my uh, you know, my AM number one ended up sixty percent out, so I didn't have any positions on, and um, I was like, I, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to put another one on or not. You know, it's like, yeah, it's some tight range, but premium is really tiny and. Um, so as far as TLC goes, I, I don't, you know, I don't know. Uh, I did put on a, uh, in my smaller account, uh, one, uh, some, well, I guess it's not like yours, but it's a, it's a Wooga with only, only did a couple contracts and it was the 70, 75s. So. So that's the only trade I currently have on, but I don't have anything in my TLC account.
Yeah, I I can't tell if this wants to flush or not. It's kind of come down to yesterday's high a couple times. I had a uh, had a few decent little day trades today. Let's see, what did I do? A couple of mighty nineties. Oh yeah, Boeing. Boeing flushed and bounced with a nice little volume spike as it was approaching yesterday's low. Kind of chopped around forever. Finally got a little bit of a flush. I held it. I got out of most after two red bars and then held a little bit down to lows of day. So it ended up being a, a little winner. The other one I did was... Oh, yeah, Amazon. Amazon was a nice one. Yeah, I totally missed that Amazon one. Had that nice flush and it and it peaked above the overnight high. A little volume pop and had a nice, nice flush down. I, I got out of most with the after the first two bars and then held a little runner down to lows of day. So that ended up being nice. We do have PPI tomorrow morning. PPI is pre-market. And then 15 minutes after the market opens, uh, Fed member Goolsby speaking. Due to deliver opening remarks at the Community Bankers Symposium in Chicago. We've got consumer sentiment. And preliminary University of Michigan inflation expectations. Those are labeled as medium impact 30 minutes after the market opens. Then at 945, Logan speaks and 1210 Bowman speaks. And then taking a little look into next week. Monday, is the market closed on Monday? What is the 14th? I don't think the market's closed, is it? Columbus Day? Okay, so just banks are closed. Maybe the bond market too. I'll have to double check, but... Um, yeah, stock market is open. We've got Waller speaking at 2 p.m. Not a whole lot going on Tuesday or Wednesday. Thursday, retail sales pre-market. Thursday, not uh, af uh, after the market opens, not much. And Friday, not much. So not a lot of news next week scheduled. So I got in one more price action bit here. I'm on the 65s and 75s. Well, unfortunately, the Royals couldn't pull it out last night. So we got a little redemption game tonight, boys and girls. 
Well, that's pretty electric atmosphere. Yeah, we just got to stop walking people. That yep. Would, that would help. Yep, you can't walk, you can't walk nine batters. But it was good to have playoff baseball back. Let's see, as far as individual stocks go, biggest red AMD's down four and a half percent. I think we've been falling all afternoon. On the green side, DJT is up about 16%. A couple of weeks ago, during one of the power hours, I was talking about how the uh, shareholders, starting on the 19th, could uh, start to sell. So I, I kind of thought the stock was oversold anticipating that and then it would bounce actually went down another couple of days but ended up bouncing i put on this bullish butterfly that's up nicely about 540 of risk it's currently up about 1200 got an order to close half at a buck 77 looks like it's trading at a buck a buck 75 looks like it's trading at a buck 77 so that may fill that's kind of bouncing around So looking for a little chop here to book some profits. Definitely didn't get the vol contraction after CPI that I thought we might, but we'll see what happens after PPI tomorrow. I thought we were going to all-time highs earlier today. Yeah, I kind of felt like it. Just that nice grind up. Got close. Got within two bucks. I took off my 3-4 DTE double calendar this morning. Another nice profit there. I am calendarless right now. We can just chop between in between sixty five and seventy five. That would be ideal.
what else is going on my friends any uh any new folks got any questions anything you're trying to figure out that you haven't been able to figure out yet Yeah, always volatility, not volume. Nice, Talon. What were you trading? OFC, what what strategy? Like a zero DTE? Nice. Oil's kind of popping back up today. <laughs> hadn't heard that one can put it on the list Like somebody's on the Zoom chat here, Ray. Ray said, what time is the best time to enter in the morning after the dust is settled? Hey, Ray, do me a favor. Uh, all the posting is in the Zero Live chat channel in Discord. I'm going to disable the Zoom chat so I don't miss anything. Um, but to answer your question, uh, I, have, I have some strategies that I enter right at the open. So depending on what volatility has done overnight, a lot of times it makes sense to enter right at the open because you get a quick contraction in volatility. Sometimes you can book some profits pretty quick. Um, so it just depends on, on the scenario. I typically don't enter anything at the open if volatility has contracted overnight. But you'll see that if you look at in the trade plans channel, if you check out the different strategies, the different option omega backtest links, you'll kind of see that as a filter on there and the time of entry. Uh, Dark Avenger, one of your videos, you talk about creating a document with profitable but currently inactive zero DTE strategies. Any progress? No, I haven't. I, I'll do that. I'll try to get that done for, for next month's trade plan. Also, just you know, keep in mind, you can all the tabs on that on my trade plan sheet go back to when I first started. So you can also reference it that way. But I've, I did want to kind of curate that list a little bit to things that, that I think are still really solid strategies that I'm just not currently personally trading, but I'll, I'll make sure I get that done. If not before my next trade plan update at the latest and maybe sooner. Uh, let's see, Moel, my setting is one minute. Yep. That's the one I use. Perfect. 
profit target trigger I have immediately. Uh, fun trader, are you, is that question to me? I'm not sure what you mean. Why do you go so heavy in one shot instead of starting small and adding? What 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 is that in reference to? I mean, part of what I do with, with Bic is I'm, I'm tranching in with small tranches all day. So it just depends on the strategy. I mean, there are some strategies that I have very specific times or criteria that enter. And so I'm just using whatever position size that I'm comfortable with, you know, taking on the amount of risk I want to take on to get into that strategy for that specific criteria. But like, you know, like the British iron condor stuff, I'm, I'm trunching into that. I'm layering into that all day with small size. Uh, DRB in your BIC method after you get stopped out on the put side, do you ever load back up on the put set? No, I do not. Then you're, then you're really starting to play just directional trading, right? So I just, I trade it as a, trade it as a package and let it, let it uh, go through the process. Getting close to 20% here. Yeah, I, I, as I mentioned, Moel, I've I've had it happen both I've had it I've had it work both ways though. You know, I've had it where I had a uh when I was using bot algo stops through Trade Steward. And by the time it got the order in, I had some pretty, pretty massive slippage. I've also had slippage with broker resting, you know, orders sitting, sitting on, um, you know, resting at the broker for specifically for like the big trades, because we have the option to do use broker resting. It, it, this slippage has certainly been a fraction of using the bot algo uh, stops. So like I mentioned, it's just, you know, if, if you're going to use stops on spreads, you've just got to, you've got to be okay with having those little issues every once in a while. It sucks. I wish it wasn't that way, but it is what it is. Yeah, so it's been it's been better with the broker resting stop by far. I do not do zero DTE on natty gas or oil. If you look at the option chain in natural gas, for example, they don't have zero day options, right? They only have monthly. You've got 18 DTE, you've got 46 DTE, you've got 77. So you don't have the option to trade zero DTE on oil. Um, oh, it looks like oil. Oil down it does have every day. Let's see how liquid these things are. Well, oil's already closed today. It's 
So you've got a little bit wide bid ask spreads on the one day options. And then of course you've got much higher commissions because you're trading options on futures. So I really, I really use the futures options for longer duration strategies. Uh, I like to sell premium way out. And then um, we also have a strategy called the hedgehog, which I like to do on futures options as well. But I don't do zero DTE on them. Yeah, that's interesting, Elliot. I saw you and uh, Trade Scouts posts on that, having that big slippage on one DTE. I would not have... I would not have anticipated that thinking that they kind of move a little bit slower, but yeah, that's interesting. I'd like to see price stay above 57.70. My Wooga. You got any Wooga? Yeah, I mentioned that when I was my first got on here. Oh, gotcha. Just a little, just a little two lotter, little two two yeah. contracts. That's what I got. A little two lotter in NDX. Yeah, it's the uh, seventy seventy fives. Currently up seventeen percent, but it needs to stay up. It needs to stay up. I don't want it going through lows. There we go, right back to center. I did put it on a bullish BRR and NDX in the one DTE options. I was, I was in it when it made that big push up. I was planning on pot potentially transforming it to remove the risk, but then it kind of rolled over, so still just holding. Really don't want to hold it through PPI, so I'll probably just close this at the end of the day if we can get a little bit of a bounce, book a little profit. Shis, are you on here?
I mentioned in the calendar channel that I've been doing some testing with just putting on single put calendars, usually in the morning, and a lot of times getting out with uh, close to 10% profit by the end of the day. Here's one I put on this morning on the 75 puts. It's up a little bit. I've got a profit target at 405 on that one. Looks like it's trading at about 385, 390. I also put on a 5,800, thinking we we're going to go higher. So I skewed it a little bit, and then we went lower. So I'm down a, down a little bit on that one. I put them both together, up a little bit. I could use a bounce. Uh, I know some folks use ES for zero DTE, and really the main reason comes down to avoiding strike conflict because they already have other strategies in SPX. Um, but yeah, they're 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 more expensive, uh, and the and ES is half the size of SPX, so you'd have to do twice as many contracts in ES to have the same position size as SPX. They are super liquid, but yeah, the the commission is a big a big downside. Yeah, I read that book back. Well, I read the original Market Wizards. I think I read the new one too. I don't remember. It's been a while, but the original one I read, gosh, it was probably back in the early 2000s. Freedom, I would never put a hard stop on a calendar trade. In fact, I would never I would never put a hard stop on a on anything that I hold overnight. So it's just a it's just a mental mental exit. Yeah, best loser wins a good one as well. Tom Hoogard. Yeah, I read Flash Boys when it first came out. I, it was great. It it was a good story, good good book. But I just I don't think he knows what he's talking about from that perspective. Like, you know, it's it's, it's almost like it's, it's kind of trying to demonize high frequency traders. But the reality is, you know, high high frequency traders are essentially market makers providing all the liquidity. Yeah, the algo traders, high frequency traders. Yeah, I mean those are those are the those firms provide a ton of liquidity to the market. Take those guys away, we'd be screwed. We couldn't we couldn't trade like we do today.
like there's a uh, there's a trading there's a high frequency algo trading group here in Kansas City, and they uh, in fact the guy who started it he ended up he ended up basically building it building it up and then um, kind of got more on more into the exchange side and he ended up starting bats which ended up getting bought out by SIBO. And at one point they were providing like a crazy amount of liquidity, like a huge high percentage of the liquidity to the, to the NASDAQ. And that's what they were. They were just scalping algo high frequency traders. I don't know the details specifically about what this group was doing to kind of create that edge, but yeah, that was, that was certainly a big topic in that book was the, you know, who could get closest to the exchange, who could outdo each other with the, the, uh, front running and faster execution and all that. But I mean, that's why we get price improvement. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't remember that well, that I don't remember that book that well. So I'm not sure about the dark pools. Was up twenty two percent. Yep, mine's about the same. A little over 30 minutes to the bell. Let's see what these butterflies are trading for. right in between strikes but if it's at a strike they're probably trading for a dollar 20. Well, I could close this out for 40%. I've just got a one lot left. I think I'll just let it go for a little bit. 
Try to get 60. Uh, fully loaded. Listen to my podcast where I interview um, Toby Mathis from Anderson Business Advisors. He is he is adamantly against filing as a uh, using trader tax status. Uh, the kind of the short of it is there is no there is no real trader status at the IRS. And if you, if you do that, you're essentially asking to get audited. It's a huge red flag. And he, his, he discusses, um, you know, just setting up a, an, a, a normal entity to use as a, a business for your trading and then you can deduct different things and get a lot of the same benefits. The problem with traders tax status is essentially they are um, doing mark to market on your, um, on your losses. So it's essentially like you're be able to write off your losses, which is, you know, not, <laughs> not that, that's, that's not part of the rules. Yeah, go to yeah. If you go to navigationtrading.com, I think there's a link at the top it says podcast or navigationtrading.com slash podcast. Yeah, SPX are known as what it called 1256 contracts in the code, which means you pay uh long-term capital gains on 60% of your profits and ordinary income, short-term capital gains on 40%. It's called the Trade Hacker Mindset Podcast. Yeah, Toby Mathis was the guy's name. This company is called Anderson Business Advisors. I'm actually getting ready to move all my tax prep end of year tax stuff over to those guys. I did. I used them to uh, set up a living trust. It was a really good experience. I'm, I'm impressed with a lot of a lot of stuff they're doing. So I'm gonna. I've been wanting to get rid of my current accountant for years. And just kind of being procrastinating, but I'm going to move all my stuff over to them. No, they're, they're national. They're not in Kansas city. It's Anderson Business Advisors. Let me see if I can pull it up. Here it is, AndersonAdvisors.com. And that and Toby Mathis is one of the one of the owners of that that group. He's actually he's got a lot of uh 
he's got a lot of good stuff on uh on his youtube channel as well good little snippets on different topics some are some are directed specifically to traders he works with a lot of real estate investors as well Yep, Neo Noob, these are zero DTE expire at the end of today. So zero DTE options expire at the bell. So 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern. If you're trading something that doesn't expire today in SPX, you can still trade 15 minutes after the bell. Like if I was trading a 1DTE option, I could still open or close a 1DTE option or beyond 15 minutes after the bell. And if you trade on interactive brokers, they also have a pre-market session Tomorrow, if you're on here, I don't, I can't remember exactly what those hours are, but they have extended hours trading. So if you're neo noob, if you're trading one DTE, it won't expire in the morning. It'll expire tomorrow at 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern. Are you a uh, fund trader? Are you talking about the trade I'm showing on my screen right here? So this is a, this is one of my BIC tranches. So these are, I've just been tranching into these throughout the day in periods where I, it looks like we're starting to consolidate and then I'm scaling out. Very similar to what you, uh, if you've watched Chad's course, very similar to what he's doing. The, the, the difference of what I've been doing lately is just managing the put and the call side separately. BRB, the, the idea with the 80... It ran 80%. I have not found 100% show better results. I'll, I'll have to go back and look at that. But the logic with the 80% is if you get stopped out on one side, you still have profit from the other side. So even if you get stopped on one side, you're, you can still be profitable.
uh, freedom. I'm going to, there's a pin message in the BIC channel where I do a little video overview of that. So check that out. Uh, Rocky Fella. The last 10 minutes, that's the one we call the Magic Mahomes. It's in the, it's in the Transformer lessons. It's the Magic Mahomes strategy. If you're tranching in by specific times, then yeah, you would need a, a separate bot for each of those on top of the mountain. Are you on Schwab Trade Steward? Yeah. Yeah. So you'd need a, I've in, so I've, I've been doing most of my big stuff in, I, in my IB account using tat. So I just, you can set up a schedule with all the different times you want to enter, um, in trade steward. I've, I've actually just been doing it with, um, user triggered bots. So I just have a put side set up and a call side set up. And then I enter those because I'm, I'm doing it based on price action. But if you wanted timed entries, then yeah, you'd you would need a separate bot for each one. Uh, fully loaded. My opinion is Gex probably works as good as anything else out there, which means works about 50% of the time. Now, to be fair, I have not spent a great deal of time with it, but I have not in my, uh, in my dealings with it, I have not found any any value that would be any different than any type of support or resistance line that you can draw on your chart. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. This is my favorite indicator to use. It's better than Gex. Uh, I would say, I, I think trade steward is probably just as good with that broker resting from my experience. Yeah, I do like the reusing of the, uh, I do, I do like the reusing of the longs. That is a nice feature. Uh, no, I, I was thinking about it, Chris, but I decided not to. I did. A, I taught a class to the Canadian Association of Technical Analysis. And I thought about thought about poking them with that with my super duper pr proprietary indicator, but I decided to be nice. <laughs> it was my first time. You know, I didn't I, I didn't want to I didn't want to come off come off too strong. Yeah, I didn't I didn't want to crush all their dreams in my first meeting. Next time I will. Oh, it looks like I missed the uh proprietary indicator. Yep, I was just I was just letting people know who my my favorite 
my favorite uh, indicator was? <laughs> well, I had to do a quick run. Um, Stone, when I took him to school today, he forgot his brain at home. Hmm. He also forgot his helmet and shoulder pads and cleats in my car. Oh, that a boy. Yeah, not happy. No, I did let him. I did let him know, DRB, that I do not use technical analysis. I was very clear on that. I just wasn't a smart ass. <laughs> Except for VWAP. That's right. Yeah, Chris, he left his brain at home. He does that sometimes. All right, that's a, that's high enough. Yep. Volatility contracting on this little grind up. Got about a minute and a half till MOC. Seventy five butterfly up to about a buck sixty or so. MOC coming out. Not hearing it yet. It's a little late. Well, working the seventy fives and eighties for my Mahomes trade. Did not hear anything on an MOC. I got filled a few 80s. There go the Wooga Prophets. Filled on some more 80s.
been filled on nine of 20. Still never got an MOC number from Financial Juice. Now I got filled on not. Okay, there's the rest. Filled on the 80s. Yeah, fully loaded. They did not announce it today. I'm not sure what's going on. My bot also filled on the 80s. Yeah, it would just be on the main page. Well, it printed. They didn't say it, though. S&P 500 plus 100, uh, 106 million to the buy side. And I got stopped out of my last side of my BIC. Another, another wooga loser. Wow, taking off. Yep. Should have closed her out. <clears throat> well, let's rip up to 85 and then drop. Another little push and Mahomes will lock in. Come on, get up there. Let's get a big pop in reverse. Oh, my NDX with is still in range. All right, let's go. now we got to go down. Now we got to go down to 75 before going down. Got to move away from 80. Uh, fully loaded, really anything under a $3 billion print is just kind of normal flow, so there's not much. But um, there's a, uh, I did a little kind of mini course on the market on closing balance. It's in WAP. I think it's under other strategies. Four minutes to go. I have to reevaluate my small account here.
five Woogas and four have been losers, and one has been a $23 winner. Yeah, Wooga's been letting us down lately. Yeah, it's... um. Of course, today was not really a Wooga day. Yeah, it wasn't. And I, well, I could have closed it out for about 30% profit. I mean, you know, so maybe it's, the thing is, is it's smaller counts. So it's like, well, you might as well just close it or should you close half? A little under three minutes. My little NDX wig is right on break even right now. Mahomes needs a move. Well, the last couple have been, it's been the last 15, 20 minutes that's put it in the red. Two minutes. And it looked like we were going to punch through 85 there right off the bat, but it just stalled out. I thought we were going to go through lows of day. Anything above 83 would win for Mahomes. It's in 82. Less than a minute. Need a move. Thirty seconds. Down to 79. Ugh, hovering right at 80. Ding, ding, ding. Well, hey, it was a 9.7% winner. Negative close for Mr. Mahomes. <laughs> My NDX. My little NDX Wuga is a winner. About 882. My Bix, was 104 bucks. My Bix made about 947. My price section Bix were profitable. So everything pretty solid except for Mahomes. All right, all. That is a wrap. Tomorrow's live stream. Tomorrow is Friday the 11th. Chat will be streaming live in the morning at the market open for Mighty 90s and Runners. And we will be back for power hour. Cheer loud, Take care, all. Yes, sir. Have a good night. Cheers.